Hey guys, it's Matt here, and today I'm doing another quick Matt rants. Uh, this one actually, so funnily enough, I recorded a Matt rants before this that was supposed to come out either today or tomorrow. Uh, it's actually coming out on Wednesday. Uh, so we're going to have two Matt rants this week. Wow, look at that. Who knew? Uh, okay, so uh, the reason why I'm doing this Matt rant is because it's it's a breaking news update. Breaking news. So, um, as of course, you guys can notice if you're looking at this as a part two uh, to the, um, if you're seeing this on YouTube anyway, you'll see that it's part two to my 40 w Winks, uh, Kickstarter rant. Now, I'm very flustered because this is some very, very interesting, strange news. Um, okay, so, basically, early on, uh, I think around the time the Kickstarter first came out, there were some leaked photos of this, um, 40 Winks game potentially being ported to the Dreamcast. Now, those photos were quickly, uh, removed. I don't think they were officially on, uh, Pico Interactive's Kickstarter or website, but people were discussing it in some news articles, I believe, and then those rumors were immediately shut down either by Pico or, you know, people just found out that they were false rumors and they were not being discussed anymore. So people thought, ah, it was just Dreamcast port. Puh, what's that about? So anyway, so here's what ended up happening, though. Um, basically, if the uh, if the Kickstarter went past 100000 right, $100,000, uh, if it went up to 20000 that was the original goal, and that was met within days. So basically, after that 20000 was met, we just kept on going higher and higher and higher, and there were some different tiers. One of the tiers was for... Um, uh, one of the tiers was for the N64 controller that I mentioned uh, in the last Matt Rance. So we had the N64 controller. Then we had the plushies at 100000 Then after that, uh, any other goals were locked because they were basically saying, hey, you know, uh, many Kickstarters do this if you don't know. Uh, these goals are incentive. Sometimes they're Kickstar Kickstarter exclusive. And sometimes these... Uh, won't you might never even know what they'll what they'll be because they might not make it up to a point past 100k. So they did though, which I'm very happy about, and I'll explain why in a second. By the way, I want to mention I mentioned last time. Oh, I might back this project. I officially have backed the project. So I wasn't able to get the early bird special at 130 dollars because sadly that ran out. So what I ended up getting was for 150, I got the game brand new in box, and then I got the special edition of the game brand new in box and special edition is going to have a different kind of cartridge it's going to have a different kind of box and uh, some other goodies will come with it as well but i want to mention uh i felt weird paying 150 for two versions of the same game thankfully our uh, resident let's player and podcaster tristan walter pitched in uh and he spent it's uh, basically the 20 that i would have uh because i would have gotten both games for 130 with the early bird Sadly, again, it was gone. Had to go for 150. So I just said, Tristan, I love you. Just pay me a 20 and you can get the game. And funnily enough, he actually got his N64 two to three years ago. So he never had an N64 until about three years back. So uh, it was just him and I uh, yelling at each other, cackling on the phone, saying things like, you thought we were crazy, but uh, you thought we were, you thought we were mad. But uh, anyway, so what's... Uh, about this is newsworthy. Why am I talking about this with another Matt Rance here? Well, because once they went past the 100,000 special, not only did they say that there's at uh, 125,000, we would be getting a 40 Wink special edition OST, and we, meaning those that actually backed the special edition. So if you bought a special edition, which are still available, I believe, on Kickstarter as this is being recorded, um, and as hopefully when this is still released, I still have special editions up. If you buy the special edition, even if it's a normal special edition, no bells and whistles, you will get at this point, uh, the N64 controller, a, a plush of either rough or tumble an eight inch plush. And if they make it to 125,000, you will get the 40 winks special edition OST. Now that's not all though. Apparently, if you get to, if, well, if this entire Kickstarter gets to 200,000, which I hate to say it, I don't know if I see it getting there, but two, and I'll explain why in a second, 200,000, we will be getting, we as in the community, not as special edition backers, and that's the, the, the interesting thing here, but it says we'll be getting a port of the game to the Sega Dreamcast. And so here's the thing, though, I want to mention, as I said, um, 
uh, last, obviously, last uh, podcast, uh, last rant, rather, um, this game was never brought over to N64. It was supposed to be, but then it wasn't, uh, dro- it was dropped. It was released on the PS1. This never was going to be brought over to the Dreamcast. So what this means is they have to make this from scratch. Yes, of course, there's obviously code for the Dream uh, for the N64 version, PS1 version, but they have to port it over from scratch, quote unquote. Now, and then it says, by the way, at the bottom of the uh, the new stretch goal, uh, it says that um, it will Dreamcast game to be an add-on f- for backers, not add-on feature, but just an add-on for backers. But even though it says that there. Uh, I got this, by the way, through email. Uh, you could look at updates. I don't know if you can see updates if you're not a backer. I, I hope you can because um, it does, you know, mention in the updates as well. But I got an email personally. And here's, so I don't know if I sound hyped. I'm hyped because I didn't think this would happen. I'm not exactly hyped about it happening, though. And it's not because of the fact that my Dreamcast is having some issues and I got to open this baby up and maybe see if I have to clean something out or potentially get a better working AV cable um, because I don't know what part of it is not working because it turns on. It seemingly turns on, if I remember correctly, but it doesn't output any um, any signal. So, um, but why am I not as hyped as some other people are? Because seems like there's a lot of hype going on here. Why am I not hyped? Well, here's the thing. I don't know how much work, I'm not a game dev, I don't know how much work goes into porting a game, right? Uh, I also would like to mention that, uh, f- to be fair though, to be very fair to Pico Interactive, they've ported games before and they've actually taken some games that have been either buggy or incomplete and they've actually worked on the code to release them so in full. So they've done that in the past with certain games, but those games, if I remember correctly, were not for the PS1, the N64, or the Dreamcast, or weren't at that level, if you will. They were for games for the Sega Genesis and for the or Super Nintendo, or in that area. Also, Game Boy, Ga- Game Boy Advance games, I believe, as well. Uh, so this is where, to me, things get a little bit more complicated and where I worry a little bit. Not so much for the entirety of the Kickstarter, because again, if all the funds are chopped up properly and, you know, put towards the plushie here and then put towards the OST there and put towards the um, the controllers there and that's, you know, separate and that's fine. But, and by the way, that would be another, again, remember another, uh, if we're spilling it up evenly, another 75000 would go just to the Dreamcast port. But it's not just to the port, it's also to pressing the discs. Um, making sure that, uh, you know, obviously getting the jewel cases, which that isn't, jewel case is not expensive, right? But pressing the discs, um, I assume creating a manual for it, also shipping them out to backers. Uh, also, another thing too that matters and um, that I'm a little concerned about is it says that the Dreamcast game is to be an add-on for backers. I don't know what that means yet. Like, does that mean, because here's the thing, right? It makes sense to say, which they do say here, hey, if the, you know, if the 40 Wings controller, which is was backed, which it was at 60,000, if this is backed, then you can actually get the 40 Wings controller if you bought the special edition, which I did. So that means I'm getting the 40 Wings controller. And then they say, not under the exact, um... Uh, the exact description for the 100,000 rough or tumble 8-inch plush, but they do say it in the email, hey, if you backed the special edition, you're getting a plush, which again, I'm very happy about. They even say in the email, if you back the special edition and they get to 125,000, you get the OST, which again, cloud nine. I'm good. I'm good with all of that, right? It's the issue with the fact that the Dreamcast version, to me, again, it becomes a a bit of a problem is because they haven't specified if I'm getting the special edition, if they're just going to throw in the Dreamcast version. And frankly, uh, why would they, right? Like, really? Just me paying $150 means I get an entirely uh, another version of the game completely? So... You know, now I kind of worry a little bit if all of a sudden we hit 200k and then they say, oh, that's excellent. You'll unlock this if you pay us, you know, 55 because then it's like, wait, but all these people backed, maybe even double dipped, maybe triple dipped just to try to be able to get uh, the ability to have a Dreamcast port. 
and then they might have to pay more on top of it. Now, I know that's completely, that's complete uh, hypotheticals there. The company is not stated that there's going to have to be more money put in after the 200000 is made, um, or the goal is met, rather. But just because they haven't stated it, that's, that's kind of the issue here. It feels like the company so far... They haven't really been secretive in what they've been trying to do. They haven't really been withholding anything, although I will admit I was a little confused about the rough and tumble 8-inch plush until they described it in the email. And I'm sure there were updates that I might have not been looking at um, before either. So other than that, though, it seems very, you know, very clear with what's going on with all three uh, tiers. But it's the fourth tier, the fourth stretch goal, rather, sorry, the fourth stretch goal that uh, is really kind of throwing me for a loop. And as much as I think it's great that the Dreamcast has um, love, you know, again, it's not just, it's not just because mine's not working. Uh, I love that the Dreamcast is getting some love, but it's a lot more, uh, just, there's a lot more of time being dumped and a lot more expenses being dumped into making a port rather than just, uh, you know, copying the game onto a board and sending that out. So, you know, it's especially a game that was already seemingly released. Like it would, to me, it would be, uh, if anyone wants to, I mean, I don't know if this is the best comparison to me, but I think it might be good. It would be like saying, hey, Nintendo is going to put out Marvelous, which seemingly was a game that they already had uh, set up and ready to release, right? Uh, mo releasing Marvelous on the Super Nintendo versus saying, hey, we're going to port this to a different system uh, that doesn't really have any kind of... Um, doesn't really have any uh, compatibility. Like, it, it, what I mean by that is specifically, it's not like Nintendo is saying, hey, we're going to put Marvelous on the Switch. They have emulators in their own, you know, in, in the Switch. Uh, I would imagine the Switch. Be yeah, no, people have been saying they've been buying older Super Nintendo games on the Switch. So, uh, like Earthbound, I believe. So, you know, it makes sense if you're going to port either, obviously it's Nintendo's own system, but it makes sense because they have the emulators in place. But if they don't have Dreamcast emulators for the Switch, it would be strange if a company that isn't Sega was saying, hey, let's port Sonic Adventure, let's say, over to the Switch or something like that. Um, or, you know, it just, it, I don't know. For some reason, it seems like there's a, not a malfunction because I believe in this company and I believe they have the skill to do it. It's just more so of the time and the money and I always worry about uh, time I worry about because, of course, they have deadlines for everything else, but not this tier because, obviously, this is a what-if situation. So then now I'm just wondering, well, what's going to happen? It, can this? Can they possibly make a port of this game this you know, to the Dreamcast and have that released by September? Will that be a February uh, you know, exclusive, kind of like how they mentioned that uh, the, if you just get the 40 Wings controller separately, uh, th that might come in in February. I'm pretty sure they mentioned that on the tiers themselves. So is that a February goal or is this Dreamcast game going to be a September goal? Are people going to have to wait longer, uh, you know, for the Dreamcast version? Because believe me, I would have no problem if that was the case. But it seems like, you know, I'm sure they have all their ducks in a row and they have all their info that they don't want to, you know, release all that too early. But uh, because, again, we could never get to, you know, 200,000. But the thing is, even though they probably have everything written up already and ready to go and they know what companies to go to to press these discs, to me, as someone who's backing this, um, I wouldn't feel I don't feel comfortable backing it again to get to that level or personally to uh purchase the game again like let's say you know again hypothetical if they get to 200k and then they say hey uh he pay us some more money just for the exclusive dreamcast version you know i don't know if i'd feel comfortable about that unless i knew everything like when is this going to come out um you know how is it going to work is it um is it going to affect my Dreamcast, because I don't know if you guys know, uh, some backdoor ways to, uh, like when people used to say, hey, I copied a Dreamcast game, and here's how you play it, and here's the disc, and the boot disc, and how I play it, it used a different part of the Dreamcast's 
uh, I'm sh- I'm not explaining this correctly, but or well, but the point is is that uh, there was a part of the Dreamcast that was being used. I believe it was the mill CD function, and that uh, wore out the Dreamcast in ways that if you just put in your real games, your real hard to find games, really hard to find games uh, for some of them, but your real games into the Dreamcast, it would actually be reading it uh, using the uh, what the GD ROM feature versus the mill cd feature because the mill cd feature was supposed to be uh, implemented for karaoke cds but sadly that never really caught on so dreamcast modders used that to try to circumvent all of the uh the copyright protection but that wears out your dreamcast over time so is this going to be a mill cd disc or is this going to be a normal dreamcast disc because if it's going to be a normal dreamcast disc i i'd be a bit more in you know into that or in for it but if it's going to be a mill cd disc ah but dreamcast is already you know on crutches as it is i don't want it to then have an issue with um with reading discs over time so um but one thing i want to mention though is looking at this email uh one thing that also got me a little nervous um it seems like you know I, my biggest fear with Kickstarters is when a Kickstarter tries too hard to please everybody and then fails in, in, in miserably. And I don't think this Kickstarter is going to fail miserably. But I don't think they need to give us as many options as they're currently trying to in one regard. In one regard. Because I know it sounds silly to say that we don't want options. Like, we're the consumer. Of course, we want options when purchasing these products. But hear me out here, guys. Uh, in this email that I have, it mentions that, uh, let's see here. Uh, let me look at the, because I'm trying to find the actual, um, let me see here. Yeah, here we go. Um, basically, they said, before they mentioned the new stretch goals, they said, we'll only have the plush available on this Kickstarter, which... You know, that uh, frustrates me, but I understand it both from a, you know, from a business point of view. And also I understand that, um, you know, at this point, if you really want the plush, the special editions still exist. I don't think there's a limited number of special editions out there because that would be weird if they want to get to 200,000. Why would you limit the special editions? Um, So I don't think there's a limit on those. I'm pretty sure you can get all the special editions you want. And then you'd get your plushie with it. And, you know, again, depending on the on the stretch goal, you'd get other stuff with it too. But here's my here's my issue. Not that, although it's a little sad. Uh, and they wrote, and we will survey all special edition backers to pick which character the plush should be of, i.e. rough or tumble. That's fine. There's two characters. You can't make plushes for both. You know, I get it. Plushes are actually kind of expensive to make. Um, I know if you buy them in bulk, Nothing is truly that expensive, but plushes are not as easy, I would argue, as getting a boxed version of a game in bulk with, you know, with the, um, with the cartridge, the manual and the CDs and all that stuff, it gets a little bit more expensive, but I think at the core, just getting the game, even just getting the game cartridge, I think that's not that really uh, that expensive compared to making and trying to design these plushes and trying to have them look good. Uh, so you have to get a good, uh, you know, manufacturer for them. So it's not that I have to choose between rough and tumble. The next sentence says options will not be limited only to rough or tumble. Oh no. Oh no, 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 no. And let me explain why. I know it might seem minor to some of you, but here's the thing, right? It would be like saying, oh, you get to choose between a Mario or a Luigi plushie. And you go, okay, Super Mario Brothers, that's great. And then you, and then they say, but options will not just be limited between these two. And, and first, and my thought is, oh, but I, look, I love, you know, Toad. I love Princess Peach. I love Bowser. I love Goombas, right? They're all, I love all of the designs in Super Mario Brothers. But why you can't do that because now all of a sudden you're going to have five people talking about how the goblins look cool and then others saying how they want rough, uh, roughs or tumbles um you know super form i forgot what the exact term was but uh they're going to want all these different designs and and stuff like that and you're not going to be able to a you're not going to be able to please everybody b you're going to have to take that time to add those people in the poll and then c 
I've seen designs, uh, if you Google it, or if you go on the Kickstarter, you can see designs for, I mean, techni- it's funny, technically you don't see designs for what the actual plushies are going to look like, but you said in the, you know, in the, um, in the goal, only rough or tumble. So, and I see the, again, the, you know, the, um, what's it called? I see the 3D models. They're technically not plush, yes, but uh, there's just 3D models. But still, I feel like I have to then see other 3D models to see what you can potentially get from those plushes. So, you know, I just feel like it's kind of like, guys, just do not, do not overcomplicate things. Just simplify it. Just make it rough or tumble. They're on the cover of the game, only two of them. Just let's just do that. That's okay, right? We don't need to go any farther into this. Also, I personally um, feel again very strange about a new dream. Uh, like the thing is, a new Dreamcast game is not the problem to me at all. I would have no problem if this was part of the original. And I know it would seem like it was too much if it was part of the original uh, goals and the original tier. Um, but it's just, I have no problem with developing new games for the Dreamcast. Why would I, right? I love the Dreamcast. I bought some very interesting things for the Dreamcast recently, assuming that the Dreamcast would work. And sadly, it might need some, uh, a little fixing up, but still I've bought stuff for the Dreamcast recently. I have no problem with the Dreamcast. I love Sonic Adventure. Uh, and it's just, I'm a little concerned, just a little concerned about the fact that this, this may not go the way we'd like it to, or at the very least, this might take so long that people are going to get a little disgruntled. And I don't want them to, I hope they don't, but sadly that does end up happening sometimes with Kickstarters when you have to make a game from scratch. Now I know this isn't technically being made from scratch, it's being ported, however according to them it's not being emulated, i.e. they won't include some kind of, which I assume exists, N64 emulator for the uh, Sega Dreamcast. So there's going to be some manpower that's going to have to be to put uh, have to going to have to be put into that to actually make sure that the game is a legit port that can run on the Dreamcast without any problems. So do I think they can do it? Yes, I do think they can do it. Are they going to be able to do it in a time frame that'll make people happy? Well, gosh, I hope so. Uh, will they be able to do it and then add it to my special edition? I don't think they would, and that's the thing. I mean, if they, believe me, if they say, hey, if you back the special edition, you're getting the Dreamcast version too. Oh, damn, right? I would be, I would be very, very, very happy about that, but I highly doubt that's going to be the case, and if, if, you know, if you, um, if you disagree with me on that, don't talk to me about it, because I have nothing to do with this Kickstarter. You should email them about it, right? Email Pico Interactive. Personally, I might also be emailing Pico Interactive to ask them, Uh, to kind of shed some more light on the Dreamcast version, because if they want that to get funded, personally, I think we need a little bit more information before just going all in to try and fund this Dreamcast version. Also, I want to mention, though, is that they're getting... I want people to remember this, too, by the way. Yes, the... um, the rough, rough or tumble, one of the plushies, right, is a Kickstarter exclusive. Yes, that is true. And seemingly the OST is going to be a Kickstarter exclusive. Yes. However, I want people to remember a few things. And by people, I'm referring to scalpers. I don't know if I can call you people, but I'll call you people just to be polite. Uh, scalpers, because uh, I, I addressed you guys last rant and I'm sure you loved it. Uh, I'm sure the hate mail was glorious. So, um, addressing you this rant, just again, even though they mentioned that it's going to be an exclusive, also remember that a lot of people have gotten the special edition. There's either the, you can get the special edition early bird, you can get the special edition normally, and you can get the combo, which again is the one that I got, which was the normal and special edition. Also, I think there's a tier even higher than that that I didn't really want to go to where you get even, even more stuff right? So what does this mean? Well, what it means is, if you're wondering what it means, what it means is this. You, uh, scalper, if you thought, oh, I'm going to try to dump a lot of money into this and I'm going to get them, I'm going to get them, 
there's a bunch of other people who are probably satisfied. Like, I don't think people are looking at this and going, oh, I don't have the money to to give to this Kickstarter because there were some pretty low tiers. Like, I, this didn't go over... I mean, it went over 100, sadly, for some of the tiers, but for what we're getting now via the special edition, I'm okay with paying 150 if I'm getting the OST, a plushie, you know, a controller... Uh, and again, we don't know about the Dreamcast version, but still, getting a special cartridge, getting a special box, getting the OST, the plush, the controller, and also, um, I believe there was some more stuff as well in the tier, like a, oh, a special art book. Getting all that with for 150 and another copy of the game itself, uh, just normal copy of the game in box, I'm okay with that. Um, so but what I mean by this is there might be people like me who've never, you know, who've only played a little bit of the PS1 game and thought, oh, I always wanted to try that. And then there's going to be some other people that are diehard fans of, of the game. But I don't think there's going to be that many people that are going to be left saying, oh, no, I didn't, I can't believe I didn't get to fund the 40 Winks Kickstarter. So if you think that you're going to be able to sell these plushies for, you know, 200 uh, a piece, you're going to be wrong. So just just be very careful. This is not an investment uh, or if you consider it an investment, it's a very poor investment. Uh, and also, before, because uh, I want to mention, if anyone's wondering, uh, even though I did mention it, you know, just clarify, the N64 Collector's Early Bird, the N64 Collector, the Collector X64, which is what I got where you get the uh, original inbox and the Collector's version, uh, Early Bird, and the Collector X64. All of these four tiers, and not all of them uh, have a limited amount, all of these four tiers are where we can be able to get the controller, the plushie, and if it's backed, the OST. There's not going to be a limited number of these. It sounds like there are, but making more than $100,000, there's not going to be as limited as you think. It's not as limited as you might think. And again, when it comes to these controllers, there's two different tiers where you can get the controllers. There's the normal controller tier, if you just want the controller itself. Uh, you don't care. You have the game or, or whatever it is. You Maybe you emulate it. You don't care. Um, so there's that version. Or there is the version where, again, I as I back the um, as I back the collector's edition, I now get the controller in it for free. So, guys, there's not going to be a limited number of these. Just putting that out there. Uh, it just makes me laugh because, you know, sometimes you hear people saying, like, no, uh, you have to. It's an investment. And sometimes I can see what you mean. In this time, it is, during this time, it is definitely not one of those times. So, uh, do I feel bad for backing this? No. Do I feel a little worried? Um, I, I, I only feel worried, I think, for the people that want the Dreamcast version, right? So, again, that's really what I'm worried about. I'm worried for you guys who are really hyped for it. Me, I'm okay with it, but I'm not as hyped for it. So, I'm a little worried for you guys. Uh, and also, I'm just worried about the fact that, you know, how much money will be allocated to the Dreamcast version. If it's just the 75 that's made, 75,000 that's made in between the 125,000 and 200,000, if that's the case, I'm cool with it. I have no problem with it if that's the case. If it isn't, if somehow maybe some other funds get siphoned and then, you know, because that's the thing. Sometimes, I'm not saying they can't plan. I'm not saying anything negative about Pico Interactive. I've just... I just, we've been burned before. I think we as a gaming community, we've been burned before. It's not just Mighty Number no. 9, because that game at least came out. But a lot of the backers did not get what they wanted. Uh, and again, that was creating a game completely from scratch. But, um, but I do think that creating the game from scratch, while that was a big issue, another issue was them trying to port it to every system. Because I'm pretty sure there is still no 3DS port. Now, this isn't every system, obviously. We're only getting it for Steam, for N64, and if it gets to 200000 for Dreamcast. So we're not getting it for every system. But again, I'm a worrier, guys. I mean, you've seen me do, if you're watching this on Those Guys Play, you've seen me do What's in a Cart because I'm a worrier. Even if the business is reputable and I trust them, I always want to double check. And I've opened up a lot of different carts to see if they're real, if they're repro, bootleg, whatever you want to call it. And uh, again, you can watch that series and see, you know, is the cart real, is it not, and how they look on the inside. Because um, again, I'm a, I'm a worrier, so that's what I do. Um, so anyway, 
I want to, as we're wrapping this thing up, I want to thank you all so much for listening in. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, please remember to like and subscribe. If you're watching this through Blog Talk Radio, you can still follow us as well, blogtalkradio.com slash those guys on the radio, or our YouTube channel, Those Guys Play. You can also go over to our podcast channel, Those Guys on the Radio, to hear me review different things with Tristan Walter and a bunch of other different hosts. And also, by the way, if you want to discuss anything about this 40 Wings Kickstarter, uh, if you're excited and you think I'm a fuddy-duddy for, you know, feeling so, uh, I'm, I'm a worrywart for worrying about the Dreamcast version, then please comment below and talk to me about it. Um, if you didn't like the video I want to mention, you can also still like and subscribe. doesn't stop you from doing it. You can still do it. Uh, also, if you want to ask me some questions or suggest future video ideas, you can do it in the comments below, but you could also do it through our Patreon, which is patreon.com slash ggproductions. And if you do it through our Patreon, I'll definitely say that it'll come out more, more quicker. More quicker? That's yeah, that works. Uh, it'll come out quicker. And why would it come out quicker? Because as you might notice, if you're you know longtime fans of the channel, I release five to seven things a week. Uh, sometimes on the five side, but usually five to seven things a week. So we have a lot on our plate. We do a lot of different things here on those guys play. So basically, donating to us to our uh, Patreon account is kind of not. It can be used as a tip, but it can also be used in a, as an express line. Basically, it's saying, hey, uh, I want you to do this really, really badly. And we'll acknowledge that, and we'll do it really, really quickly. So, uh, again, thank you all so much. Uh, love you guys, and hopefully you like this rant, and you can tune into the next rant where I talk about how the YouTube monetization policy, the new YouTube monetization policy, affects me personally as a YouTuber, and how it could affect you, or how it might be affecting you. And also a little bit of the history behind the uh, ad policies in the past, and why this change may have occurred. So that'll be coming up on Wednesday, and uh, if you're listening to this through uh, Those Guys Play, and if you're listening to this through Those Guys on the radio, Blog Talk Radio account, it might be up next week. Should be up the week after, yeah. Okay, guys, so thank you all so much. Love you guys. Take care. See you. Thanks for tuning in. All right, then. See ya.